Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're out on beautiful Lake Chickamauga. We've got a foggy morning and it feels like top water. I hope I'm right. I've got six top water rods and a fluke laying on the front deck. Let's go fishing. The air temps are down quite a bit this morning. I've got my bibs on. I started out with a hoodie, but I was able to take that off. But it just feels like top water. The water temperatures are still up high. That's why we've got this heavy fog bank this morning. This is prime conditions for that morning top water bite. I'm not gonna talk too long because I just wanna get to it, but we're gonna make a run here, start on a spot where I've been catching some fish, and then we'll start exploring from there. Shower blows, top water fish to start the day. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Little bit of chartreuse goes a long way on these foggy mornings. <laughs> it's so still and so quiet this morning i've done a couple of things so i just picked up the frog that one ate the jackal kr in open water so i went with that little frog and i turned my trolling motor way down i think a lot of people miss that you keep your motor up high you step on the pedal stop step on the pedal stop I think that's a lot more disturbance than just setting it really low and just staying on it. And just making a slow, steady pass through the area. I don't think that bothers those fish as much when it's super calm and they can hear everything that's going on around them. A couple small ones to start. Hopefully we get a giant. I had a huge one blow up in here not too long ago. I know they're here. We'll find out. That one ate the walking bait. That's that smaller shower blows. Tim got on a kick throwing this 105 size. I followed suit and he was right. It's been going really well for a little while now. <laughs> he was on the wrong side of the grass mat. I think a lot of anglers, you know, obviously you throw a bait with exposed treble hooks in the open because you don't want to get snagged on everything. But I think a lot of people miss the opportunity to throw it over the top of the grass into open water pockets. There are a lot of pockets that you can walk a top water in. Yes, you're going to get snagged at the end. I hooked that fish in the back. I had to drag him over the grass like a frogfish. Uh, but there's a lot of open water with a lot of fish in it that a lot of people never even throw a walking bait into. We've already made one move this morning, uh, made a pretty good size run in that thick, nasty fog, but now it's starting to lift a little bit, at least here. So we're gonna make a big run. Uh, hopefully we can get out of the fog and get a little bit of sun and maybe get that frog bite going a little better. We'll see.
lost him. Little fluke fish. <laughs> well, that is not the one that we're out here looking for. But every fish is welcome. He ate a super fluke on a Texas rig. The topwater bite, at least for now, seems to have just gone away. So I switched to the fluke and I'm paralleling the outside edges of the grass, trying to pluck fish off. And it worked, just not quite the fish I had in mind. Oh, he came off. <laughs> so I switched over to a white scum frog because I was missing a bunch of bites on bluegill. Now that one came off. I actually just caught one about three pounds off camera. I was all excited and then realized the camera wasn't on, but I've only been throwing that white for maybe 20 minutes. Already got those two better bites. Buddy. Thinking I should have been throwing white sooner. It's funny how those little differences, I mean, color's not a little difference, but something as simple as a color change can take these fish from slapping at the bait to just choking it. It's amazing. That one missed and came back for more. <laughs> Man, that's fun. Nice fish. That's awesome. I've been bit three of the last four casts in the same hole in the grass. And that's a nice one. Unfortunately, the boat's turned the wrong direction so you can't see, but I'm afraid to step on the trolling motor because I'm so close. These fish are only like 20 feet away maybe. I'm at the opposite end of the mat where those fish were blowing up one after another. And all of a sudden a shad ball showed up. So I picked up the fluke, got under him. I think it took two twitches to get that guy. I'll bet there's more. That one 
smashed that frog. Man, that's fun. It just never gets old catching frog fish. Whether it's through the mat, open water, doesn't matter. It's a blast. You guys see that blow up up there? Natural blow up. If you get on a mat like this and you're seeing natural blow ups, there's a lot of fish in there. Because you can catch a lot of fish out of a mat where you're not seeing any blow ups. You want to see activity. Maybe a little popping bluegills or shad around the edges. You want to see that activity. But a lot of times you won't actually see blow ups, you'll just catch fish. But if you can see them blowing up, that's a really, really good mat. <laughs> 30 pounds of moss for a two pound fish. Fifty pounds of moss. Get over here. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. He crushed that thing. He also shredded this frog. Looks like it's gonna go right back together though. All good. <laughs> I looked away for half a second. I don't know how they know. I get more bites when I'm looking away. All right, we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, today was an awesome day. I just wanted to get out on the water with you guys and just catch some fish. And we accomplished that. Today was a fun day on the water. It was crazy from a weather standpoint. I mean, we started out completely socked in, just pea soup fog. Uh, I can't say that in all the time I fished the Delta, where it's always foggy in the winter, that I've ever had a time where I was throwing my bait out of sight into the fog. That was thick. And then that broke, gave way to bright bluebird skies, slick calm, and all of a sudden a wind kicked up, and then it was prefrontal. And a couple of minutes ago, I had a little, a little wall of rain come through here. Uh, just a wild day, but the fish cooperated. You know, we caught them on the shower blows, we caught them on a fluke, and we caught them on a couple of different frogs. Caught them on the uh, Kiara and on the scum frog. Today for me was really a strong reminder of the power of color. Uh, there's a reason we carry a variety of baits with us. Now you can have a favorite frog, favorite topwater, a favorite Senko, and it'll catch fish most of the time, but it's fun when you have a reminder like today where I went from bluegill to white, and I went from almost no bites, you know, like a bite an hour, and a lot of fish just slapping at the baits to just full commitment, fish crushing it, choking it, hitting it more than once, and it was just in the blink of an eye when I went to white. And it wasn't location because I threw white in four or five places and got bit in all of them. Uh, such a great reminder that even if you've got a favorite, do not be afraid to carry a couple of options with you because sometimes the bite is off. Sometimes it's just that they want something different than what you're throwing. And it could be as simple as color. Now that's not to say that white is the end all be all. Uh, I could come back out here in a couple of days and they not want this and suddenly want bluegill or black or chartreuse. And that's why I carry options. I'll link in the video description, I'll link the baits I was catching fish on today. 
Um, I'll link a couple of those really key colors for each one. I think that'll help you uh, as well as the gear that I'm using, just like we always do. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.